TypeScript 4.1 release release candidate. Have you checked the announcements from from Microsoft? I did, and uh, it seems quite exciting. To be honest, it seems like 4.1 is a bigger update than 4.0 was. I agree, and um, I remember that um, Ben Awad did a video um, on TypeScript 4.0, and he mentioned in the video that the uh, versioning seems to be more like uh, marketing driven than than um, semantically driven but uh, yeah to me it seems also like uh, you would think right TypeScript 4.0 is a huge deal I mean it is uh, was also a substantial update but I also think that TypeScript 4.1 is is a huge update even though just from the name you you wouldn't think so yeah right sometimes it's the small things um you know the thing that I'm most excited about 4.1 is that now you can give strings and what the strings contain some typing so for example i use express.js a lot for my node servers yes. and there i can like enforce much better typing of like the url params and stuff that's really exciting this is uh, it's it's more than exciting this is really to me it's absolutely mind-blowing it's absolutely crazy how now you the meta language you have at the type level like you said for instance if you want to type urls is absolutely insane where you can so one of the big features of typescript 4.1 is are these string or the template literals that you can use as type and then you can so you can pass an express let's say it's a good example you you give you can give a um, express url and you can say or uh, does this type extends a, st a template string, which is like say slash infers the uh, second parameter and then slash. So you can extract parameters statically, actually have the static types of uh, URLs parameters. You can statically have an error. So if this doesn't extend this particular URL type, uh, you can return some... I saw an example on a blog post where you can return a, a tuple with an error message. So uh, during static analysis, if it doesn't match, it will, uh, you know, you will see the return type which will contain the error message. I think we are... I'm pretty happy with my usage of TypeScript, but I feel like now the power of TypeScript is... I'm not even scratching the surface when, when I use it because it seems like now the meta language so we have if conditions, we have these uh, string template literals, we have the infer keyword where we can infer types within a string. So we would have slash foo slash bar, and you can infer the types of foo and bar based on the string literal. It's just the power is, is absolutely incredible. I agree. I feel like I'm also using TypeScript pretty uh, bare bones. Recently there was like a TypeScript quiz or like that was like posted by TypeScript where you could like uh, solve certain TypeScript challenges. And you know, the, first, the first one was already way too hard for me. Um, so, the, for example, this int for keyword, I don't know, but... I, you know what? I don't know, uh, and I read documentations about the infer keyword. I still don't know how to use it. The only use case where I'm like, oh, this makes sense, I understand it, and I know how to use it, is to use the infer keyword within string template literal. So you have... A string a template which is foo slash uh, slash foo slash bar and you want to uh, get the foo and bar types using the infer keyword this makes sense within a string template literal Other oh I see that, I so no this is uh, the, the new one coming up in 4.1 yeah exactly but uh, the traditional uh, use case for infer I still don't get it <laughs> <laughs> oops <Right>. <laughs> but <laughs> I want to explore this more and I think the more I can improve the typing, the, the better. This is really incredible. Um, so TypeScript was really a bottom-up approach, meaning we started from JavaScript and let's try to type the untyped word. And at the beginning, of course, uh, that was, I would say, pretty awkward. And, and I remember having discussions with friends telling me, yeah, it's nice, you have static type. I mean, obviously, uh, five years ago, even... 
10 years ago or no TypeScript yeah, maybe is less than 10 years but let's say 7, 7, 8 years ago the capabilities were not nearly as advanced I mean now it's, it's getting it's getting absolutely insane and I remember having discussions with friends where you know they were saying yeah that's cool but obviously because there's so much we are trying to type the legacy world you will never get as good as a typed language that does top bottom approach but actually now I'm like no it's as good if not better actually than most than some top bottom uh, type systems it's yeah crazy. right I mean we, we started with no typings at all so we were thankful to have just a a little bit even though other languages had like really strict typing from the beginning. I'm thinking of Rust, for example, to 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 get all the types uh, correct is insane. While in TypeScript, you can still be pretty loose and uh, totally abuse the type system. Mm. True. I wanna I wanna invest the time to make it as strict as possible. And it's, it's just so nice. It starts with your uh, configuration, right? You, for instance, stuff like any needs to be absolutely forbidden. And especially now with the unknown type, you can really uh, get rid of the any keyword, I believe. And I think this you can do in your TS config, no implicit any. You can do it in your ASLint also to forbid. I think it starts with a strict TypeScript configuration, right? We should really have our TypeScript configuration also on the ESLint level to be as strict as possible. Yeah, right. Um, so on, on a new project, I, w I would configure it as strict as possible. If I have like an old project, then still good. Then the, I have the option to allow some implicit anys so that it's easy to, mm. um, over time, improve the, like make it more strict but start with a relatively loose config. And uh, yeah, like you said, I think we are barely... Uh, us, we, we cannot call ourselves uh, TypeScript poor users. Like, there's so many... I'm really happy with it. And for instance, even when I record a YouTube video, that while recording, it gives me all these errors immediately so I can... I don't even have to think about it. And it's automatic. It's very cool. But there seems to be a lot of features which... Uh, which I'm not even using. And uh, so we talked about the infer keyword. Um, there are also some subtleties, I guess. Maybe, you know, the difference between void, never, and is there a third keyword also? You know, things like this where um, I'm not like completely sure what... Uh... Yeah, sometimes when I see the type never appearing in my in my code sometimes, then I got so confused at the beginning, but uh, then I, I realized it, it must be some terrible bug that I did. Like, if true equals false, then then you enter like a, a statement where some types are never, and that is like a big brain fuck for me, to be honest. But... Uh, there are a couple of use cases for never. I mean, a bug with never, but uh, I guess people get confused easily. Is like if you do const foo equals array, um, it's typed as never because for him it's an empty array it has no no types right it doesn't know if it's an array of string or and then if you uh, you say foo dot push some string is like no it's an array of never because it's an empty array yeah right uh, I think if you if you get the type never then it's almost for sure an indication that you have a bug in your yes uh, project I don't think there's like a legitimate use case where you would put never intentionally. You can uh, use it for switches. So you want to make sure you switch on the type. You, you use the switch. So in the default case, you want to make sure that you've dealt with all the possible case. So if you did, uh, in the default case, you should have never. And if you didn't, uh, it means you forgot to handle one case. So in default, you can do invoke a function which takes uh, never as parameter. And if the parameter is not never, it means uh, it will throw a static error and you know statically, like in C++ basically or in C, that the switch was not uh, uh, exhaustive, which is pretty cool. 
that is pretty cool. I need to investigate how I, I can make use of it because um, at the moment, if I get to the end of a switch statement and that is like unexpected for me uh, that I reach this point, I, I throw an error to... Uh, to and you can also the... throw an error at runtime, just in case. But yeah, right. I I think this is a a a a good pattern sometimes to to just like put a lot of assertions in your in your code. Um, that I think that pattern is a bit underrated in in JavaScript and TypeScript to to put these assertions to they they can be annoying, but I mean you want to get notified of your bugs, right? Mm. But anyways, I mean, TypeScript 4.1, I'm super excited about it. The power and the expressivity of the meta languages is getting absolutely uh, out of control. You mentioned the express use case. Uh, Sebastian Lorber in his newsletter. Shout out, Sebastian. I mean, I love his newsletter. It's in French again, but uh, most of the links are in English anyways. And uh, yeah, I think even if you're a non-French speaker, you might get value out of it. But uh, it points to a use case also in uh, React routing, where same you can like do static type parameters extractions, detect incorrect path uh, statically. It's uh, it's getting it's so wild. And uh, yes, us as users, we are uh, for sure only only scratching the surface. And I'm I'm also looking forward to to be more advanced in in my usage of of TypeScript. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> 